Welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast, the photo imaging industry's leading news source. Here's your host, Gary Peugeot. The Dead Pixel Society podcast is brought to you by Media Clip, Advertech Printing, and Independent Photo Imagers. Hello again and welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. I'm your host, Gary Peugeot, and today we're joined by J.F. Mayan, the founder of PhotoDeck, which is based in France. Hi, J.F. How are you today? Yeah, hi, Gary. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, having me. I'm doing, doing great. Thank you. So tell us about PhotoDeck. It's one of the many, many photographer-oriented websites to do uh, portfolios and things, but it's more than that. So how did you get started? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, it was, uh, I mean, we've been running for uh, more for, uh, for about 12 years. I think we uh, started Photo Deck in 2009, so it's been quite a while, quite a while already. And uh, the initial initial selling point was uh, stock photography. The uh, main objective was to provide photographers the ability to create their own stock uh, website. So there was a time where when um, the, uh, the stock business was uh, was still flourishing for, for photographers, but we're still we're still very concentrated with uh, some major players. And uh, I myself played with a uh, building my own stock website and being quite successful successful with uh, with that. So from there came the idea that hey, we should provide that as a platform as a tool for independent photographers sure. to cut the leash and become independent and have no middleman and take things into their their own hands and their have their their own website. I, as, as, as time went on, then we, uh, we expanded a lot into uh, so portfolio building and into proofing galleries um, and more general, um, general e-commerce uh, features, allowing also fine art photographers, for instance, mm-hmm. to sell prints, uh, which is quite relevant to the, uh, to the topic we have, uh, we have today. Today, PhotoDeck is, uh, is, I think, known for being a tool that is extremely uh, flexible in a sense that we have very different kind of kinds of photographers and even agencies uh, using PhotoDeck. We have uh, people using PhotoDeck just for simple portfolios. We have wedding uh, photographers using PhotoDeck for uh, well, selling to their clients so to private consumers in the B2C uh, context, um, uh, distributing and selling images. We have stock photo agencies. Uh, we have commercial photo agencies. Mm-hmm. We have even photographers shooting thousands of images a day and uh, and selling them also to, uh, to to consumers. And we have many people doing different things. It's quite common in Europe, for instance, to have uh, a photographer that does weddings, but also uh, like on the weekends. But during the week, uh, might be closer to commercial photography, working with um, so commercial cl- commercial. Um, mm-hmm clients and like advertising shots and this sort of things and, and and the requirements for both kinds of customers and 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 galleries and workflows are very different and our right. aim is to be able to, to 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 support both on the same platform so that photographer that changes specialty over his career or then just serves different kinds of uh, customers and projects um, at any time is able to do everything on on a single platform when you started out i'm looking at it you know, stock photography, and I think a lot of the, you know, portfolio companies have started. Of course, the stock business has just radically changed over the last, yeah. you know, 10, 12 years. So, you know, you're the you course, that, yeah. it's, right? it's, it's, it's exploded or imploded or whatever you want to talk mm-hmm. about. Generative AI coming in there, you can write to create your own stock. So it looks like you pivoted at a good time. Was that always your plan to go with stock or did you realize, hey, listen, we're building this great platform that can do all these other things as well. And how long did that realization take, you know, um, before you said, you know, yeah. we have to start adding more stuff? Yeah. So so first of all, it's not really, it wasn't really pivot in the sense that we're still doing we're still doing stock and we yeah. have a number of of, of, of both uh, individual stock photographers, but also stock agencies using Photodeck as their platform. Um, I think, yeah, we, it, it, took about, it took a couple of years before we realized that, uh, yeah, we need to do something else and just this. So we need to expand. Yeah. And I think the, uh, I mean, most of what we do doesn't come from us uh, in a sense that it's, it's not necessarily us, us saying that, hey, it would be good, better for the company uh, or better for the industry if we went to that direction and, 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 and did that, that thing. Um, everything we do or mostly everything we, we do is based on customer feedback. 
Sure. So, so when we when we start to have more uh, members saying, "Hey, have in stock side," but it would be nice if we could also like distribute images to private clients, like for for commission work. Yeah. Or yeah, have yeah, a stock side, but yeah, I'd like to have a portfolio as well. And uh, can, can you improve that so that um, yeah. um, my stock side looks a bit better and could use that? You know. So um, gathering all this uh, all this uh, feedback on a continuous basis is really what directs our. Uh, our our development and, and and our direction. Of course, uh, we have some safeguards. And we try not to do anything anything stupid for the long term for ourselves. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's really it's really the um, the, uh, the the feedback we we get from members that direct what we do. So I think it's kind of interesting how you have the the proofing component side of it. Yeah, you know, because I I think I'll, you know so there are there are there are sites who are like have that, but it's not a major you know, mm-hmm. feature of that. How has that developed? Is Because I think it's interesting because you almost have like this public face, you know, where people can have their, yeah. their portfolio, but then they have sort of this private space. And how how is yeah. that? Yeah, so... Um... Well, basically, they are, it's, it's fairly easy to integrate them into uh, into uh, onto the same website as long as you have the capability to well, display the images and the galleries in different ways. So, so that's for the uh, for the presentation part. Um, uh, we have a way to, to display portfolio galleries in a way that okay, mm-hmm. there is no distractions. It's a uh, we let the, the uh, we let the work talk. The images are big and uh, so not, not 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 too many buttons and so on. But you can also have uh, like separate galleries where uh, the settings are dedicated for proofing. Uh, and so there you can right. have uh, more advanced features. And again, that depends very much as well um, if what, what kind of, of, of uh, final customer photographer or the agency is serving. So it's for, for B2C um, uh, photographers, it means like having simple password protected galleries, having a way to add uh, images to favorites and, uh, and just being able to view them and, and order them easily, but without going into too much complexity. Uh, yeah. For like B, uh, for B two B business cases, uh, then we need to go one step further. So it means that security needs to be higher, so that it is more granular. You need to be able to give permissions, mm-hmm. not with just with a generic password. We need to give permission to specific individuals or right. to groups. Uh, you need to make sure that people can can make light boxes, share them within a team in their company, in, in, and work together in, in in a collaborative fashion on those right. light boxes. So, so the features evolve, or I mean, the features that are available uh, to everybody, but can be used in different way depending on who the customer customer is, and it all integrates into this you know, onto the same website. Yeah, so I think it's kind of interesting because you have this photographer aspect, but we also have this digital asset management. That's sort right. Of that's right. Yeah. It, which is, you know, you could have uh, you know a business store their company's images there. And Absolutely, we do you know, brand yeah. assets and you know corporate exactly. hedging and all that fun yeah. stuff. And yeah, so that, that's kind of interesting as well because I haven't heard a lot of photographer and I'm doing air quotes photographer sites do that kind of approach yeah, absolutely absolutely and i think that goes it, it goes a long way into showing how 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 flexible the platform is because it's not something we want to we intended to do ourselves but we realized at some point hey we have some some companies and we actually have some big companies and bigger names who are using photo deck to uh, as a digital asset management system even though it wasn't marketed uh, at that time in, in any way as a digital asset management system but uh, talking to those uh, those people, we realize that they actually the platform is uh, at, at its core a digital asset management system. The website being just the front end part of it. Uh, so now we, we we are a bit more not aggressive, but we 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 have kept improving the product for that kind of scenario. Mm-hmm. And again, the same features are basically available also to agencies and to the individual photographers if they want to. And that's mostly about, for instance, like multi um, multi user backend uh, accesses and uh, well, there are some more specifics um, around search and so on. But the the, the the same platform can be used and is used for for that uh, as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And you're um, you're in multilingual. You're in a, a bunch of different countries. Um, are you adding that's, more? That's right. So we are. Um, I mean, Fitly has been uh, the front end site. Um, so what what the uh, websites, basically, photographers and, and companies companies build have been multilingual since well, potentially one. You know, we are European, we French. We actually launched in the US and the UK before launching in, in France. So the multilingual is uh, a spike on the front end was um, essential from day one. Um, the the back end was initially launched in in in, in English. We launched French a few years uh, later because well we're from France. It wouldn't it would have been stupid not to. 
and uh, we launched uh, in Germany uh, this year. So we we, we serve um, yeah, our own members, the photographers in, in, in three languages, but we have uh, we have a dozen more uh, languages that, that are available for them to to use um, for mm. their clients. So, for instance, we have people like in Italy, photographers, Italian photographers uh, using Photodeck in English, but their own website is obviously in, in Italian, which is very important for their own customers. Sure. And speaking of Germany, you've recently yeah. become a partner with a with a German Absolutely. company that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, Whitewall. Did you have a print partner before that? Yeah. So we have um, we are integrated already in the US with WHEC, which is a, uh, um, I mean, quite a, a well known and respected uh, lab. We have another integration in the UK with a company called One Vision Imaging. Mm-hmm. Uh, we used to have an integration as well with a lab in France uh, called Picto, uh, but that integration was now put out of, um, I mean, decommissioned, um, so that we now are indeed integrated with a white wall and very, very excited about, uh, about this. Uh, you mentioned white walls being a German company. Well, they're not more German, we are French. They, they, they are based <laughs> in Germany like we are based in, in, in yeah, France. Yeah, exactly. But I think that, that is yeah. uh, one, one, one of the great things about this collaboration is, is that there is a, um, a great match, I think, in terms of uh, mm. uh, strategy. And uh, there are many common, common points. And one being a white wall is truly an international company. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. No. I mean, I've I've gotten white wall print ship. You know, here, here, yeah, here exactly. in America. So it's it's not yeah. a, it's not so. But it's just it's it's just funny how you know European companies kind of have sort of this pan European and global outlook, right? Yeah. I, I absolutely. And in the case of white wall, it was quite quite obvious. And uh, and while you, as I mentioned, we launched we we launched in Germany, and uh, white wall is is based in um, in Germany. So, of course, there was some uh, high interest for us in working with Whitewall in, uh, mm-hmm. um, I mean, to, to help uh, us uh, reaching or better serve the German uh, the German markets. And we were certainly expecting to have a very good response as well from our members, for instance, in the uh, in France and in other European countries because Whitewall is very well known in uh, in Europe overall. But we've been amazed by the, uh, the response as well from our U.S. members and mm-hmm. to notice that, yeah, white wall is extremely uh, recognized and appreciated in the U.S. as well. And we have a lot of, tra- uh, I mean, a lot of traction from our U.S. members on this, uh, on this mm-hmm. new integration. Now, is your output now exclusively white wall or do you have, do you have other products that they don't make? Because they don't make everything. Yeah, we don't, we don't do exclusivity. And I think uh, that's one of, one of the, uh, um, how do I say, um, differentiating thing with a, with a, with a photo deck. Uh, we try to, we, we don't make decisions on behalf of our photographers and at the very core of our philosophy is providing photographers with choices and control. So sure. we provide them with the option to use white wall if they want to uh, sell white wall products and, and, and have everything um, automated and, uh, and, and benefit that is a true, a, a true benefit for them, obviously, in using this, this integration. But if they don't want to, if they want to sell something that white wall doesn't provide, uh, then it's up to it's up to them really to uh, either fulfill themselves mm-hmm. using uh, use another partner uh, that we have, uh, or then we even provide uh, we even provide some kind of semi automation if they want to work with a local lab. Um, oh, so okay. here our role really is 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 to uh, mm-hmm. yeah we're here to serve photographers uh, and provide them with the control and flexibility and and that precludes very much uh, any sort of uh, exclusivity in in the solutions we. Uh, uh, we, okay. we provide. I, tell me more about that working with a local lab piece. So, how, how, I mean, how does that work? Do they just like be able to download a bundle, or if the lab has an API, kind of do it themselves? Or how? how, how yeah. Does- so the uh, uh, actually in Europe, the few labs have uh, an API, and if they do, it's it's, it's never standard. It, it's never the kind of inspiration that is ready made like we have a white wall. But it's it's a it's a, what what it provides is a fairly simple way for photographers to auto- automatically send uh, orders by email uh, to uh, to local labs. Uh, so it means that lab indeed usually needs to be small to be able to uh, accept this kind of uh, mm-hmm. ad-, ad hoc orders. But there is a I mean template that photographer can uh, can can change and. Um, mm-hmm. Sure, um, and that is being sent then to. to but the it could be time sensitive. For example, like you know, they may need something right away for whatever reason, and yeah. with the local lab by email is yeah. is a great yeah. option. Exactly, and and we see photographers using that for themselves because photographers who have their own or or even small agencies that have their own in house in house lab 
use that, that, that feature to send automatically the customer orders then to that people yeah, that makes to the, their own process yeah but i have to say that it's, it's not a feature that is widely used i think i think i mean photographers have better things to do than building this kind of ad hoc integration it's 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 um some people do so it's nice it, again it, it is an option but for most people the the integration the integrations we have with that white wall and with other labs is uh, is uh uh, is, is vastly more convenient and uh, and uh, an effective use uh, of their time. No, no, I just find that very interesting because most people, you know, kind of build their closed garden approach, right? Yeah, exactly. These exactly. are our approved printer partners, and these are the ones you use. And you're kind of yes. asked if you want to do something else. And you know, and, and there's a reason for that. It has to do with with, with, with our philosophy. It has to do with uh, with with business. Um, well, I think one of the reasons um, many companies are closed is that they have business agreements and uh, with the labs, and they take commissions both. I mean, they take commissions from the photographers, and and, and I suspect uh, have some special agreements with the uh, with the lab. Um, and, and as I said, we try to work in a different way. We really put control, control, a photographic control, uh, and the photographer's interest at the center, provide them with, with responsibility so that we don't take commission, for instance. And that's a huge differentiator. Right. And, I was going to uh, ask you about that. Tell yeah. me about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we see ourselves really as a, as a technology enabler, as a, as a technology partner for independent photographers, not as a middleman. So, uh, we don't market. We don't have a portal where, where, where we sell uh, our photographers' um, images, for instance. And, and normally, website companies don't have that. But still, for some reason, they, they feel that they have the right to take a, a, a commission on uh, the photographers' own sales. And, and we, we don't think that that's, that's really fair. And we prefer photographers to be involved, to, I mean, to, to, to take their, 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 their business into their own hands. It comes uh, with, uh, obviously, a bit of responsibility and, uh, and work. Uh, for instance, um, photographers need to connect their account with their own Stripe or their own PayPal account uh, so that the money doesn't even go through us. It goes directly to the photographer. Well, right. there's no commission, so that's, that's, that's an easy thing to do. But it means that the photographer needs to have a, 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 um, a payment account. Well, most do, and um, so, so they're certainly... Uh, very happy to to hear that uh, they keep everything, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, they, they are a, a quite important. Um, like, yeah, it's a pretty different uh, approach to uh, to most providers in uh, in in. in... Yeah, because I mean, and you just charge a fee to the photographer, and it's yes. not you know the under ten dollar fee. It's substantial. It, I mean, it's not crazy. It's uh, what like twenty nine dollars or something. So it, it's not. It's not. Yeah, that's a ballpark. Yeah, twenty five. Yeah. Yeah, but, but you're not doing the model where, you know, we're going to go in low price and make it up on commission sales on prints or services or whatever. You're just saying we're providing a value for this amount for, of of our website, yeah, exactly. And it's up to you to make the most of it on the other side. Yeah, I think we, we're a lot about, about about fairness as well, and I feel this this uh, this money is very clear and very fair because, uh, I mean, you know, why would a photographer, I mean, lose a percentage on on sales? Uh, it, w- it, w- it would be like, like like a camera maker making like taking commission every time you you, you hit on the click button. It doesn't make sense because it doesn't really. Of course, it has an impact. Uh, how many how many times you take a picture and how many pictures you put on a website has an impact down the road on how how much you sell. But it's not. You know, it's, there's, there's no marketing mm-hmm. marketing promotion effort in there. So yeah, we, we we like things to be to be clear. And I think the the relationship with a, with a white wall also goes in. Um, I mean, follows very much that, that, that direction. It, with that integration, photographers still has a direct relationship with a white wall. Mm-hmm. Here again, we're not in, 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 a, we're not a middleman. We're not in, 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 an intermediary. So, if the customer has something to ask, white wall wants to negotiate prices with a white wall or has a support question, they can contact white wall directly. They know what all the number is uh, at white wall. It's all connected to their own account. There mm-hmm. things. Stay very clear, uh, very very clean. Everybody, uh, anybody has its own. Uh, everybody has its own clear role in the uh, mm-hmm. in this uh, in this model. And uh, something that is also important um, when you think about the uh, European market is the uh, customer ownership and the privacy privacy thing. Right. Because here it means that with this model, it, it is very clear who is a customer 
of whom and who kind of owns the customer data. Right. So it is very clear that when um, when somebody purchases from a photographer a print or a download or, or whatever, they purchase from the photographer directly. There is no intermediate. So even legally in terms of, of, of privacy, there is no question to be asked, uh, okay, what is going to happen to my data if I put if I put it on that website? And the question that photographers sometimes uh, ask, sure. and, and, and rightfully so. And here the answer is very clear. I mean, the, the customer buys directly from the photographers, doesn't, doesn't go through the payment, don't go through our platforms. Um, uh, the, the database is... But you may not even know the customer information is buying the print at all. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so, so yeah, so, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very, uh, very clear model. I think that's something we, uh, where we appreciate. It's, it's different, like, from, like, when you purchase something from, on, on eBay, for instance, you're not quite sure whether you purchase from eBay or from the eBay seller or, or who does what, and so on. You, you, see, you see what I mean. And in, 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 in the European, <laughs> yes, yeah, in the European context, is um, uh, it, 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 it's something that has its own weight, and that is becoming more and more important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I think that's interesting because you said the privacy piece is a, a big deal. It's becoming a bigger deal, right? And who's responsible yes. for that? You know, yeah, yeah. because if you're a photographer and the lab has a breach you know you may be exposed because of the you know the yeah. your their customer's data may be exposed because of that and that's right and, and that's interesting so was that a conscious choice you had i mean you've mentioned kind of a couple times philosophy and kind of your business ethos you know yeah. is, what is that how how would you sum, summarize that sort of your your business ethos your ethics, I guess, is the word. I mean, just as stepping back, perhaps, and uh, explaining how we are founded. We we are small. We are a small, like family company. That's how we started. And uh, well, perhaps perhaps it's because it is. We are we are European. We're not really interested, for instance, in things like a market share or I mean, taking the world, being 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 the leader, or, and especially uh, not interested into how much money we we might raise from investors. Uh, we want to stay uh, independent, a small company. And what is important for us is the market share. What is important for us is making sure that we have, uh, we help our customers and uh, we make them happy. And through that, being a small company, we know that our personal success is we don't need to be uh, to be a leader to uh, to be personally uh, so successful uh, or mm-hmm. successful as a company profitable. Sure. And um, and we think that it frees us of many things, of many constraints, um, and we can spend that time uh, on making, iterating and making product better. So yeah, it's a bit of kind of a, perhaps an old fashioned way of, of saying business. It's perhaps like the small restaurant in the corner. Just make sure you provide, you provide great food and uh, have happy customers and be happy yourself. Right. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it's, I think it's also, um, I mean, kind of way of seeing business, which is becoming more and more um, popular perhaps. Yeah. And uh, it's something at least we feel good um, yeah. about uh, going to bed each uh, each night, and uh, also you know, we don't have investors breathing in our neck. Well, that is, I mean, a great point is, you know, when you take on the outside money and you take on, you know, equity or partners or whatnot, you know, yeah. you, you're now serving two masters in some sense, right? Exactly. Your customers yes, exactly. Are serving these these other folks who may be well intentioned and they believe in your business, they want you to grow, but maybe they want you to do things that are you know, conflict with, you know, you know, I think we need to start taking 3% off those print sales, right? Or yes, something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we are, I mean, to, to, to summarize, I think we, we are, we work a bit like a, like a boutique company, but even on, on a, on a, on a global or geographically global basis. Right. And, uh, and, and, and working this way is also what allows us to make very, very fast decisions in terms of product development and very fast implementations as well. Sure. And I think that is, that is also one of the key reasons why, uh, why we're so proud of the uh, technology we have, mm-hmm. uh, because uh, we don't have we don't have endless meetings or uh, around uh, right. okay what w- right. what kind of features should we build how should we build them uh, we just do, we I mean we just do the features based on what we know our customers have been our members right. have been asking for and so on and that uh, that allows us to have not only very fast um, very fast uh, go to market times uh, but also very very robust. And a fast platform, um, yeah. and we have. It's pretty routine for us to have people coming, uh, coming to us and say, "Hey, I was on this on this large platform, 
And well, it just just slow. It breaks down and have too many issues with it. And uh, so I'm trying you guys. And and then sometimes we have people going going away from us because well they were missing some features or whatever, and then coming back after a few months or a couple of years. Sure. Well, I tried that on the big platform, and I'm, I'm, I mean, yours is so much like it just works and mm-hmm. um, it's faster, and more, more more robust. And and this can't happen if you have like a huge. Uh, huge, or at least much more difficult to uh, to do if you have a, a huge team, both in terms of uh, development and in terms of decision making. Mm-hmm. And I imagine you also can refine what you want your offering to be, because I think what happens in some software development companies, you get developers who want to add a bunch of features. Yeah, you know they they they're they're you know we need I'm a programmer I need to add stuff. It would be very cool if we could add blankety blankety blank, but. When you look through the photo deck experience, and I'm gonna say it's restrained, but it's refined, right? Yeah, you're not trying to be every possible solution for this. Well, yes, 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 and no. And um, one of the difficulties we are facing here is that with flexibility comes complexity, mm-hmm. um, and it's always easier to build a website or to build a platform. That is specialized to do d- doing one thing. So I'm very glad you're saying that that, that it doesn't look like we're trying to do everything, right. because uh, the, the the range of uh, features we have and flexibility means that uh, it is a platform that that has many more options. That, oh yeah, that, that yeah. I'm not saying it doesn't have features, but yeah. you're just not killing people with it when you're when you're looking yeah, that's right. setting it up. It's you know you're not throwing in. Uh, I mean you have you know editing tools and all these other things that people are kind of glomming on. Right. Yeah. Like everyone's glomming on, you know, some sort of AI function on there or something. That's right. You know what I mean, and I'm not saying yeah. you, you don't have access to the technology, using, but you see, but you're not beating people over the head with it. No, no, exactly. And 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 well, you mentioned AI. Uh, I'm, I'm beating people over, over the head with uh, with it, and that kind of resonates because we do have some AI integration. Uh, we obviously use AI ourselves, but it's also a good example of us doing th- things a bit differently. We uh, we don't like. The hype things, right? Right. So, 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 yeah, it would be fairly easy technically, I, I guess, to add more AI into the things and have mm-hmm. AI, AI mentioned all over the, all over our, our our website. But well, uh, if you were looking for investors, you certainly would. <laughs> yeah, exa- exactly. Yeah, and and, and that's yeah, that. I think you you hit right on the nail here. And we we, we provide uh, we prefer providing real real value and, and things that work. Uh, sometimes it, it means just sticking with the basics as long as the basics are, are well made and 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 not falling for. Uh, for the hype and and things that down the re- down the road are actually not so uh, trustful. Sure. So, what are some of the things on the back end that you may help a photographer grow their business? You know, let's say let's say I'm a wedding photographer. I do some commercial shoots during the week, and I shoot weddings on the weekends. And you know, the very typical photographer. Uh, in terms of like like back end SEO services or anything like that, is there anything you offer there? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Photo retailers, energize your sales with Share Me Chat, the proven texting platform. Using chat to text on your website keeps your customers connected and buying. See us at Pro and IPI to find out why dealers using Share Me Chat close more sales without adding staff. Find out more at shareme.chat. Well, yeah, we have we obviously have a lot of uh, a lot of tools so ranging from the uh, from how the, the galleries are presented and, and are structured and protected to the uh, to the to the SEO. We also have uh, like SEO SEO parameters, uh, and so that people can can optimize optimize their site. Uh, SEO is, a, is another good example of, of not overselling things. Uh, we, right. we do provide, we are very upfront saying, okay, well, we feel today you can customize your SEO, you can customize this and this title. We have a we have an extensive guide on, on SEO for photographers, but we're not saying that, yeah, we feel we make your SEO explode or go <laughs> like go right. 10 times because everybody recognizes that SEO down the road is, is, is mostly about popularity, it's mostly about content, it's not something website providers control themselves and we, we try to be very upfront um, with that and using that as a sales, as a sales uh, argument. Uh, again, back to the, uh, to, to, the, uh, to the philosophy. But to your question, yeah, so um, we mentioned, I talked a bit about the, uh, the, uh, the flexibility of the, of the proofing galleries and all the proofing features we have. 
Um, then obviously we also have an e-commerce uh, e-commerce side. Uh, a lot of things are available there, so uh, people have been able to license and to and to sell digital da- downloads from day one mm-hmm. with uh, with uh, with uh, today. Uh, and th- that's not limited to images, by the way. Uh, we will support videos and 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 some of kind of other kinds of files, just like we support images. And that's uh, obviously quite uh, um, becoming more and more important, especially when it comes to videos. Sure. So, so for uh, I mean, people can sell uh, the uh, downloads and in, in in different formats. Obviously, they can sell uh, prints either uh, prints uh, through integrated labs or prints that they uh, fulfill themselves, mm-hmm. and uh, to help them with their uh, with the marketing, um, what well, we have that help them help them, for instance, provide discounts based on quantities or packages, mm-hmm. um, cup and codes. Um, we also have a um, newsletter facility. I mean, the sort of things that you 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 would find right. on, on on e-commerce uh, uh, platform. Uh, yeah, it seems to me like some of the other. And there's a lot of photographer platforms out there, and a lot of them are great. That's right. But but they also almost are turning into customer uh, relationship management systems, CRM systems, right? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's um, right. You know, and and you do some of that, but that's not really your main focus. No, it's not, and, and uh, exactly you're right. So we, we we do some of it, and I think the new the uh, the newsletter part is a good example. We have a newsletter facility, and it's being used quite extensively. On the other hand, our aim is not to compete with or to into. I mean, yeah, it's not to compete or to rebuild Mailchimp. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, exactly. And uh, well, again, whatever we do is uh, is mostly based on our customer feedback, and we we, sure. we we see that our current user base is happy with the, what what we have. Sometimes uh, more. I mean, we keep we get requests every every day for improvements, and we see we know very clearly what, where we are going to improve and what we're going to improve sure. uh, over the next month, and that's on on a, on, a, on a continuous basis. But I have to say, the CRM part is not is 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 is, is not so much used at least like, with our current current members. Are you? How would I say? People are happy with, with, with what we have, uh, even though I'm sure they are. Uh, we we are nowhere near 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 a real CRM uh, solution. Yeah. Yeah. But it, again, it's almost like the AI speak, right? It's like people are taking in, uh, you know, outside money or investor money or yeah. EC money. Yeah, and that's right. Exactly. That's a buzzword too, right? The a- a- CRM is almost as big of a buzzword as AI. <laughs> no, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, yeah, you're right. And uh, um, well, luckily we are a bit uh, um, isolated from 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 that. And uh, well, if it doesn't come from a real a real need, and if it doesn't re- provide real value to our members, we don't need to we don't yeah. need to waste time. Yeah. So I mean, I was looking through your uh, you know kind of your pricing levels. Uh, you know, people get baseline storage, but you know if they get too big, they have to buy more storage and all that. But it sounds like yeah. I mean, it's it's all very reasonably accessible to most people in terms of a pricing standpoint. Is that sort of the family business ethos coming through? <laughs> yeah, well, yes, it is, and uh, it's it's interesting that we have not changed our price our prices since we launched in twelve years ago. Um, so oh, really? the, the offers have been evolved. We have increased uh, sto- we have increased uh, storage uh, space um, progressively, but basically the uh, the price point have have pretty much uh, stayed where they are. Um, I mean, they are not taken out of the blue. Uh, they are there is obviously a bit of. Uh, Competitive analysis that have been done, right? Done behind the line, at least in terms of pricing. We not we, again, we don't have to look too much at what our competitors uh, do. We don't really need to. But yeah, the the intent is that prices are is, is fair in the sense that uh, we're probably not 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 not, not the cheapest. Uh, you can go cheaper, especially if uh, uh, if you are um, willing to have uh, commissions taken out of your sales. Uh, but again, we don't take commissions, and uh, the, the storage is also something that is uh, is interesting because we have limited storage. It's uh, it's it, it is uh, well relatively affordable, but it is it is it is limited because we don't think that we think that in nature nothing is is illimited. Uh, it's like you know uh, when you have a company um, company house uh, providing free water for everybody, or you have the water uh, bill split. Equally among among uh, everybody, then they, it opens the door to abuses and so on. We are also very eco conscious, so uh, so storage is uh, is not uh, illimited, but we provide it as as, as a price uh, which is uh, which is reasonable for the quality it provides. And actually, storage is not something we we really make money. 
uh, money from. So yeah, we try to stay um, to stay affordable, but we're certainly not cutting down the prices because we see that it's, it is also in everybody's interest that uh, we as a company uh, have a, a healthy profit margin so that we can sure. uh, be here for the long term and uh, continue invest uh, and that we can continue investing in in, uh, in improving the product. Yeah. And uh, well, we've been following the exact same business model without any any change really for over ten years. It's been working very well. So hopefully, uh, any more in ten years and uh, and with the same with the same model. Where would people go for more information to learn about Photo Deck and its offerings, and you know, looking at over where where do people go for more information? Well, the, the obvious first stop is uh, is our website photodeck.com, um, and. Uh, well, there's a lot of, of, of information on on on, on there already, but uh, but I think the the real way to get to know photo day because there is uh, again it's a fairly deep platform. There's a lot to it. Can be used in many different ways. A lot of flexibility. Getting it right and and kicking kicking the tires, uh, as you guys say, is, <laughs> uh, is 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 probably the best way. So we 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 offer a two weeks uh, free trial, no string attached, no credit card needed. Just open a, an and just enter your email address, and, and you can start working uh, working on your own platform. And we're always here to um, to help with the uh, initial steps to make sure that uh, that the uh, direction is uh, correct. We we obviously have uh, some onboarding help. So we ask you if you, what kind of photographers you are, what is your speciality. Even though we understand that uh, not everyone has a very clear speciality, but at least to 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 help smooth a bit the uh, the uh, the first. Mm -hmm. uh, the first setup, and when it comes to larger uh, agencies, um, so we have agencies with uh, with uh, dozens of photographers, uh, and or even corporates working uh, with uh, with uh, larger collections and using photo as a, uh, as a as a dam. Then then we are also we still work on a on a, on a very affordable self service basis, but uh, obviously we are uh, we're trying to be a bit more available to uh, guide the initial steps and help with the initial structure. Well, great, Jeff. It's been great to meet you and uh, looking forward to hearing more in the future and the future success and growth of Photodeck, the quiet family company that is just serving <laughs> <Thank our customers. laughs> Thank you so much, Gary. I'm sure you'll, you'll hear again from, from us and it's been a pleasure to, uh, to be on, your, on, on the podcast today. Thank you for listening to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. Read more great stories and sign up for the newsletter at www.thedeadpixelssociety.com.